Good day everyone, today we will be discussing about the conceptual framework. Before anything else, we are going to discuss what a conceptual framework is. A conceptual framework represents the researcher's synthesis of literature on how to explain a phenomenon. It maps out the actions required in the course of the study given his previous knowledge of other researchers' point of view and his observations on the subject of research. Also, it is considered as an analytical tool that explains the main concepts to be studied or investigated in one's research. These could be the key factors or variables being investigated and the presumed relationship among these variables. In other words, a conceptual framework offers the rationality and fundamental basis of the entire research as well as shows the understanding of the researcher regarding how the variables connect with each other. Now that we know what a conceptual framework is, we now discuss the purposes of a conceptual framework. A conceptual framework has different purposes. First, it defines the scope and limitations of the study and identifies what will and what will not be investigated. This is according to Paul Monis in 2016 in his textbook. Also, it shows the organization, order, and direction of a research study. Furthermore, a conceptual framework enables the readers to obtain a general understanding of the research and gives them a notion of the research activities that will be performed as well as the manner on how these are carried out. And lastly, a conceptual framework serves the purpose of clarifying concepts and their relationships with one another in a research study. Now at this point, we're going to discuss the common types of paradigm models used. But before that, we're going to discuss what a paradigm is. A paradigm is a visual representation of the entire research study. Pretty much this is how a conceptual framework would look like as this would show the different variables involved in the study as well as discuss the possible relationships that they have with each other. In line with this, Cristobal and Cristobal in 2017 in their textbook have given us some examples of the common types of paradigm models which are used. The first one is the IPO model, also known as the Input Process Output. The IPO model is largely used when the research attempts to isolate the factor or major variable that causes the problem, subject, or phenomenon under investigation. As an example, we have the entrepreneur's roles towards improved work performance. For our input, we're going to include the profile of the entrepreneurs which involves their age, sex, and seminars attended as well as the roles of the entrepreneurs in terms of assessment, planning, implementation, and evaluation. For the process, we're going to have analysis of data through questionnaires, informal interviews, and the statistical treatments which will be needed for analyzing the data. And for the output, from the word itself, this would be the final outcome of the study once the data needed has been gathered and analyzed. The output would be the profile and roles of entrepreneurs are determined and the relationship of the roles and quality of work performance is further identified. Next, we have the IVDV model, also known as the Independent Variable Dependent Variable Model. The IVDV model is used in experiment-based studies. The questions raised are higher order and classified as situation relating. Remember the IVDV model is used in experiment based studies because in experimental studies we have the presence of independent variables which would influence the dependent variables which are then observed and measured by the researchers. In this example we have the effects of computer assisted instruction and demonstration method on the level of performance of grade 12 students. For our independent variable, we have the teaching methodology used by instructors, which involves the computer-based or computer-assisted instruction and the demonstration method. Our dependent variable would be the level of performance of grade 12 students, which are measured according to academic grades, practicum grades, and the parent satisfaction. This model is used for this particular study because the independent variable, which would be the teaching methodology used by instructors, would greatly affect the dependent variable which would be the level of performance of the grade 12 students depending on what kind of methodology is used 
it would have an effect on how the students would be performing in class. The next model is the PC model, also known as the Predictor Criterion Model. The PC model is used when relating and assessing the influence between two or more variables. Studies that focus on relationships, associations, differences, and impacts benefit from this model. It is also worth noting that the PC model is used for non-experimental research studies. Remember, in non-experimental research designs, we have the predictor and criterion variables in lieu of the independent variables and dependent variables. For this example, we have the relationship of the teaching competence of senior high school teachers to the level of performance of ABM students. For our predictor model or predictor variable, we have the teaching competence of the senior high school teachers in terms of their knowledge level, the pedagogical skills, and the classroom management, while the criterion variable would be the level of performance of ABM students in terms of academic grades, behavioral attributes, and the peer evaluation results. It is also worth noting that the PC model would use a direct line instead of an arrowhead as compared to the IBDV model showed earlier. The next model is the P model, which is used in research studies that propose a program or any intervention measure. It fits the situation producing level of questioning. Now it is worth noting that the P model could simply be an expanded version of the existing models that have been presented earlier. For this example, we have the proposed program for improved quality service of entrepreneurs. This is the expanded version of the IPO model presented earlier. We have the input which involves the profile of entrepreneurs as well as the roles of entrepreneurs together with specimen collection and their performance. For the process, we have analysis of data through questionnaires, informal interviews, and statistical treatments. For the output, we have the profile and roles of entrepreneurs which are determined and from this particular output, we are able to recognize what could be a proposed program or proposed intervention program that would benefit the entire community. Another example would be the relationship of teaching competence of senior high school teachers to the level of performance of students towards the formulation of the faculty development program. Now, this particular example is similar to the PC model presented earlier wherein we have the teaching competence of senior high school teachers in terms of their knowledge level, pedagogical skills and classroom management, and its possible relationship to the level of performance of students with regard to academic grades, behavioral attributes, and peer evaluation results. From the results of this particular study, we are going to have our proposed program, which is the faculty development program, in order to address areas for improvement or further improve the strengths that have been identified in this particular study. And lastly, we have the POM or the proposed original model. The POM is used when the researcher presents an original paradigm. The requirement is that it must be scientific. Remember that since this is an original model, there is no specific pattern or design on how it must be constructed other than the fact that it must be scientific in nature. For this particular example, Cristobal and Cristobal cites Kizaon in 2007 in the study the extent of participation of the nursing students in infection control practices, basis for enhanced RLE supervisory program. In this study, we have the following variables. First, we have the student respondents profile which involves the age, gender, civil status and hospital assignment, as well as the extent of participation in the infection control program and the CI's assessment of the student's extent of participation. Together, this would have an influence on the infection control practices which involves the preparation of IV fluids, preparation of IV medications, assistance in the administration of IV medications, skin care, umbilical cord care, and eye care. Altogether, the results of this study would lead to the proposal of the Enhanced Related Learning Experience Supervisory Program. Now, at this point, we're going to discuss some of the pointers in writing a conceptual framework as discussed by Baraceros in her textbook. First, familiarize yourself with the objective of the conceptual framework. What do you intend to show to your readers in your conceptual framework? 
in order for you to show or in order for you to come up with a good conceptual framework, you must be able to identify what you intend to discuss to your readers through your research. Next, base the contents of the conceptual framework on your own understanding of the elements and of the relationships of the research features. Third, see to it that all aspects of the conceptual framework are related to the objective of the research. Remember that your ultimate goal is to be able to accomplish the research objectives or research goals that you have stated at the beginning of the study. Your conceptual framework would help your readers be able to understand how you're going to go about with the process of conducting the research itself. And lastly, let others read your conceptual framework for comments and feedback for improvement purposes. In a nutshell, a framework is comprised of different concepts and theories that serve as the building blocks or the skeleton that strongly clarify the basis of the study. As such, being familiar with the conceptual framework of a study allows us to be aware of the scope and range of a concept or a construct. Furthermore, the conceptual framework enables the readers to clearly see in their minds the basic structure of the research and the relationships of variables and other factual things involved in the study.